This is the Apollo Pro, one of the most anticipated electric scooters of 2023. The Apollo Pro is finally here, and it's a highlights montage of innovative tech and bold, totally unique, or never seen before, even sometimes controversial approaches to the high performance scooter category. We are really excited to have our hands on one so early because it's not even coming out until Q3 of this year. But we're also excited about it because the scooter honestly feels like it's from the future. No matter where we park it, any scooter near this thing suddenly looks very old. In this review, we'll get up close with all the new bits and pieces of the unusual design, show you what it's like to ride, and show you how 100 riders are gonna get access to an Apollo Pro three months earlier than everybody else and for less money but we'll also tell you the catch. Up until now, the Phantom V3 with its 10 inch tires and roughly three kilowatts of peak power was the biggest, baddest, fastest scooter Apollo made because Apollo's just never made a beast scooter with 11 inch tires like the Cobble Wolf King or the Vissette 11 Plus. And they still don't because this one doesn't go to 11. These go to 11. It goes to 12. <laughs> Weighing in at 95 pounds and with 12 inch diameter tires, the Apollo Pro is really in a class of its own and 20 to 30 pounds lighter than beast scooters like the Segway GT2 and the Cabo Wolf King GT. So it's not a beast scooter and not a light heavyweight like the Phantom. Maybe that's why Apollo puts it in the category hyper scooter, but let's just show you the details and you can decide what it is. Overall ride quality is spectacularly good and it's hard to put my finger on why because it just comes from every part of the scooter. And you can see my first reaction right here. The suspension and sleek design make it feel like one cohesive idea, a next generation vehicle and not a wiggly pile of random parts bolted together. Okay, so so what's so different about this scooter? First, large diameter tires just feel better. The Pro's 12 inch tires are larger diameter than 95% of the scooters we've tested, which makes them more stable at speed, more stable in corners, and the rollover potholes better than 10 inch tires. Cornering was really impressive, especially considering that our pre-production Apollo Pro is wearing off-road tires, but everybody else's scooters will come standard with road tires, which should handle it even better. I have to admit the off-road tires do sound pretty cool though at top speed. <laughs> Even rarer than being 12 inches is the fact that the Apollo Pro's tires will be tubeless and self-sealing if you get a puncture. We've tested this type of sealant before and it works. The suspension is among the best I've ever felt. The front shock has adjustable spring preload and adjustable hydraulic damping. And it may be the first one where I just never felt the need to touch the adjusters. It just felt good right out of the box. Of course, if you're a scooter designer, the natural thing to do once you've got an adjustable shock up front is, you know, do the same thing in the back. But they didn't. Instead, they used a rubber or, you know, polyurethane wedge right here, sort of similar to how Dualtrons do suspension. Advantages are it's lighter and takes up less space, keeping the scooter from being super long. Plus, the rubber has built in damping, and unlike a spring, it compresses in a non linear way, meaning as you get heavier, it automatically gets stiffer. The deck is covered in thick patterned rubber and feels huge. It's actually a little shorter than the Phantom's deck and looks even shorter than that because it's just so wide. I like wide decks because they make it easier to steer the scooter with your feet. This footrest looks good and is comfortable to use too. And they didn't forget to round it off at the bottom, so it makes a comfortable handhold as well. Then we come to possibly the most controversial part of the scooter. It has drum brakes, which are a brave choice on Apollo's part. Normally, I think disc brakes just look cooler, but in this case, I think not having rotors hanging off the wheels enhances the sleek lines of the scooter. But in terms of performance, here's a surprise. These drum brakes are strong, and that's because they've been paired with variable regen brakes that deliver more regen braking the harder you pull the levers. For those who are unfamiliar with disc versus drum brakes, let me break down some of the advantages and disadvantages. Advantages of drum brakes include they're not grabby and tend not to lock up and skid as easily. You don't have to worry about bending brake rotors. You almost never need to adjust them. And if you do need an adjustment, you can do it with your fingers. 
Plus, drum brakes last way longer than the brake pads used for disc brakes. The primary disadvantage of drum brakes is that when they're not boosted by regen like these are, they just don't feel as strong. In other words, you normally need to squeeze the levers a lot harder with drum brakes than with disc brakes. And drum brakes engage more slowly. They lack that initial bite that you get with discs. But on our pre-production Apollo Pro, if anything, the initial bite is a little strong because there's just so much regen paired with the drum brakes. You can turn that down in the app though. In addition to the regular brake levers, there's this lever by the left grip, which is one of my favorite things about the Pro. The Apollo Pro and the Phantom V3 are the only high power electric scooters that have one of these. It's a dedicated regenerative brake. For normal riding around, it's super smooth, easy to control, and ended up being the main brake that I used. The feeling is hard to describe, but it's like a rubber band pulling you backward. Then when I really wanted to drop anchor, my favorite way was to pair the front mechanical brake with the left thumb brake. So how fast did our pre-production Apollo Pro stop? From 15 miles per hour, it stopped in 12.8 feet, which is about a foot longer than the Vissette Super 72. But I think with an updated regen brake curve, that number could come down significantly by the time the beta units come out. Build quality and performance are next, but before we get into that, I promised earlier that I'd tell you how to get an Apollo Pro three months before everybody else and for significantly less money. So here it is. We've got two links in this video's description. The first one is how to join the beta test program. And here's the catch. Apollo's asking the first 100 beta testers to ride them 500 miles and submit feedback. It's a new way of launching a scooter and I think it's a very honest thing to do. We've probably all had that experience when you buy something that just hit the market and end up having a beta tester experience but without saving any money or having a way to send feedback to the factory. So seeing a scooter launch with an explicit beta test is a refreshing change. On the other hand, for those of you who don't mind waiting, there's another link where with a $20 deposit, you can reserve an Apollo Pro from the Q3 production run. And if you change your mind, Apollo would give you 20 bucks back. TechCrunch called the Apollo Pro the Cybertruck of electric scooters, but I think the Pro is the Mercedes S-Class of electric scooters because that's another car where you get to preview features five years before other cars get them. But unlike the Cybertruck, the S-Class actually exists. So we've got to start with the strangest feature of the Apollo Pro. This is your display, your phone plus a quad lock case. The mount charges your phone wirelessly while riding. Of course, there are gonna be times when you need to grab the Pro and go. And for that, the Pro will have a simple dot matrix display at the top of the stem, similar to what Van Moof does on their e-bikes. Ours doesn't have the dot matrix yet, but the beta units and the production units will. We've covered the dedicated regen brake lever, but on the other side of the handlebars is a matching throttle. They made seven iterations of this throttle and it shows it has zero dead zone and has been through a few hundred thousand push tests at the factory. The grips are a type we haven't seen before and feel amazing. I mean, look how grippy they are. Something else you'll notice is that there are no exposed wires on the entire scooter anywhere, just the brake cables here and here. Turn signal buttons are easy to find next to each grip and they self cancel, but better yet, look where the turn signals are, right here at the ends of the bars. Cars can see them from in front or behind. You can see them while riding so you'll know they're on. Plus, you've got even more lights down on the deck. The signals start at the back and wrap around the sides. And the brake lights wrap around too. We don't have the final app yet, but you'll also be able to customize the lights on the stem and the sides of the scooter. My first concern about the bar and turn signals is how they'll hold up in a tip over, but they look pretty tough. And if you break one, the plastic covers are easy to replace. The button marked M on the left side is the horn, and the sound caught us by surprise during the unboxing. This horn is loud. Hi, 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 that's the horn right now. You'll be able to select different pre-recorded sounds in the app, but you won't be able to upload just anything. We've heard that the beta testers may get to pick which sounds end up on the final product. There's also a bell near the brake lever, which is handy for politely interacting with bicycles and pedestrians. The stem feels strong and wobble-free, and much of that is due to this new stem latch. Listen to how solid this thing sounds. 
It has an orange safety catch right here, which I like because you can release it one-handed. Then there's the aluminum frame that looks somewhere between a Stealth Fighter and a MacBook Pro. It's made from two castings, which are welded together and reinforced with a big steel bolt right here. This next feature is a trend I hope other scooter companies will follow. The Pro has a water resistance rating of IP66, the highest rating of any currently available scooter that we've tested. The second digit indicates the water resistance, and you want this number as high as possible. For comparison, most scooters, if they have a rating at all, are IP54. Fortunately, fender coverage is also excellent. Oh, and here's something I got wrong in the unboxing video. Despite what it says on the motor controller of our pre-production unit, the Pro doesn't utilize the Mach 1 controller like the Phantom V3. It uses the Mach 2. The difference is the Mach 1 has 25 amps, and the Mach 2 has 30. Another unusual feature is the Apollo Pro has a built-in SIM card, so you can track your scooter's location and state of charge from anywhere in the world. Two Jedi have landed in the main hangar bay. We're tracking them. And it enables a whole suite of other features. For example, you can power it up and power it down remotely, set up the alarm with the app, which could come in handy if you somehow forgot where you parked it, and if somebody scooter jacks you, you have the power to lock the scooter the next time it stops. Of course, SIM cards cost money to operate, so the SIM card-based features will be part of an optional service plan. Details of what's included and the official price are still being determined. But before anybody gets riled up down in the comments, it's optional. The scooter still works without it, and all of the normal features of the app still work via Bluetooth. Underneath the scooter, we find another unusual design choice. The Apollo Pro has a center stand, only the second one we've ever seen on an electric scooter. Honestly, it's not quite as easy to pop down as a side stand, and our pre-production stand sits a touch low, but the next version should be taller. To me, the main advantages of the center stand are it won't bang you in the shins while walking with the scooter, Ah! So, is it fast? Yes and no. Top speed is two miles per hour faster than the Phantom V3 at 42.8 miles per hour. That's exactly one mile per hour faster than the Segway GT2, but nowhere near as fast as 60 mile per hour beasts like the Wolf King GT. On the hilly ESG range test course, the Pro covered 32.2 miles of aggressive riding in top performance mode. That's 2% fewer miles than I covered on the Segway GT2, but to be fair, I was going 12% faster on the Apollo Pro. 0 to 30 arrives in 7.9 seconds, which as you can see, feels pretty quick, but it's not as quick as the comparison scooters because the larger diameter tires mean it has less torque off the line. The large diameter tires also mean it's not quite as quick up the hill as the Phantom V3, arriving in 9.3 seconds. In contrast, the GT2 stunned us with a 6.6 .6 second run to the top. Now, stop right here. Our reviews are known for depth and context, you know, for each little feature and model. And after this section, you might be asking, well, is it worth the $4,000 then? But remember, it was never Apollo's goal to create a 60 mile per hour scooter or a scoreboard breaker. The key takeaway you should get from this video is that the Pro isn't like anything else that exists today. Perhaps the most obvious is the robust unibody frame, which is very expensive to make, but pays off in safety and reliability. You also have premium components like a smart battery management system that itself costs about as much as a trash scooter like the Mapwheel MX Pro. And from phone as display with fast charging to a connected theft resistant scooter to ongoing app extensions, Apollo is truly competing in different ways. Like most of the beast scooters, the stem doesn't last to the deck when folded, but this sort of makes sense because it's too heavy to pick up by the stem one-handed, though a stem to deck latch could come in handy to keep the bars from flopping around when loading it. Pros of the Apollo Pro include easily one of the best looking scooters ever made, with the integrated design Apollo is quickly becoming known for, including a unibody frame and 360 degree lighting. Alongside that, the Pro is in the running for best quality ever for an electric scooter. Customization, phone focus, IoT connectivity, and app features that will just get better and better. In fact, the app features are the part that we didn't get to test as much for this review, so stay tuned as we cover updates in the future. Cons include generally on the premium end with a lower top speed and lower acceleration per dollar, and 
not for people who prefer the interchangeability and mod ability of a less integrated design. Let's look at some alternatives to the Apollo Pro. The most obvious competitor is the Segway GT2. Basically the same range, same top speed, same price, and similar excellence in build quality. But the GT2's main downside is it's 20 pounds heavier. And while it's also one of the most innovative scooters on the market, it doesn't have the same level of software experience and customization that we're expecting from the Pro. I'm including the Wolf King GT here because it's basically the benchmark for performance in this price range. So the plus side of the King GT is performance per dollar. But the downside is that it's 30 pounds heavier and it doesn't have quite the fit finish or silhouette of the Apollo Pro. And finally, I'm gonna put the Phantom V3 on this list because I think a lot of folks will end up cross shopping these two scooters. The Phantom's main advantages are price and portability. It's the only one of these four that'll fit in your trunk or can be carried up two flights of stairs. But compared to the Phantom, the Apollo Pro just feels more special. Riding the Pro might literally be the first time when I've been riding a scooter, noticed people looking at me and thought to myself, I might actually look cool right now. So who's the Apollo Pro for? It's true that this scooter is not cheap and it also isn't about arm yanking speed, but it's not slow. I hate to admit it, but part of me wants an Apollo Pro just because it looks cool, especially when the center stand is up. And while I'm personally more of a hardware geek than you know into software experiences, several other members of our team say this is definitely their new favorite product on the most premium end of the market. And there's still tons of hardware tech that has me super excited. This is truly what you might consider a vehicle grade scooter that you'll really wanna put some miles on. And it feels like a key moment in the history of scooter innovation. It feels really good to ride long distances because that's what Apollo designed it to do, to get ridden lots of miles every day. And that's why they're asking beta testers to ride them 500 miles and report back. Will this be the most reliable scooter ever made? It's way too early to say, but it has all the right ingredients. To get on the beta test program and save some cash or claim an early spot in line for the production version, check out the links down below. Thanks for watching this long video to the very end. You seriously help our retention numbers when you do that. If you wouldn't mind doing us another favor, boop the like button before you go and drop a comment. I'll probably write back.